the G-Force Skidoo, winner of the 2017 Real World Sled of the Year Awards, the Motor Under the Hood, winner of the 2017 Rad Award, and quite possibly the most technologically advanced sled ever brought to market. However, with only half of Skidoo's fleet in the G4 chassis in 17, it left much to be desired by those who felt left out. We knew the full line switch would only take a year. Heck, Skidoo told us that when we first saw the G4. But what has an extra year and greater understanding done for the 2018 lineup? Well, for today, it's brought us what I think may be one of the most anticipated sleds to date, the reinvigorated Renegade Backcountry X. Once the beast of flatland freeriding, years have passed and the competition have stepped up their game significantly. So what's Skidoo got up their sleeve and how much potential is inside the G4 chassis for this style of riding? Trail width or mountain width? What's the best combination for a true flatland freeriding sled? When it comes to Skidoo, they think it's the best of both. In off-trail conditions, it's no question. The Summit narrowed up 38.4 front end would deliver razor sharp carving, side hilling and snow shredding, but on trail, it wouldn't be right. So Skidoo opted for a new hybrid front that uses a mountain-like set of A-arms and a trail spindle. I truly enjoy how easy it is to toss this sled around and make it do what you want. And on the trail, well, it's not as planted and confident as an MXZ, but it's not meant to be. It's the best of both on and off trail, and it does a very good job delivering of both fronts. Is it as good as a switchback assault? Good question. With the front end of this sled, a 40.1 inch mountain and trail hybrid, it seems only right that Skidoo would do the same thing with the rear skid, bringing in the best of both worlds and making a completely new design. And that new design is C-Motion, a 146 inch skid, but the tipped rails really shorten up the length you feel behind you. The C-Motion is a new series of rear suspension that takes the best concepts of both trail and mountain and gives us a very capable flatland off-trail skid. It has solid front and rear torque arms and delivers a rising rate motion ratio. It does not have adjustable coupling blocks like our motion, nor does it feature tunnel adjust. All things I think make for a better off-trail boondocker. There is some adjustment available on this sled on the rear arm rear suspension shock in the form of a KYB Pro 36 EA piggyback. However, overall adjustment on this sled is something that's missing. With all other players in this category from every other manufacturer offering super high-end piggyback fully adjustable ski shocks, I believe this sled should have them too. I don't believe the average Renegade rider needs 36 clicks of compression adjustability, but the Backcountry X rider, well, these are folks who like to find the biggest jumps and the most technical terrain in the flatlands, and they typically understand how to properly adjust suspension. I believe this sled needs the Freeride 137 shock package. Heck, this is the biggest, best, and most aggressive Backcountry Renegade you can buy. It needs at minimum single stage compression and rebound adjustability in a reservoir design. Now, when it comes to the potential and abilities in deep snow, the Backcountry X really pushes this category harder than any other manufacturer has. Polaris offers the Switchback Assault in a 1352 Cobra or a Series 4 2.0. Skidoo raises the bar, offering a Cobra 1.6 as the base track and the option of upgrading that to an Ice Cobra pre studded, both at 15 inches wide. Now, if you're up for the ultimate and off-trail capability, you can spec out the Powder Max 16-inch wide with 2-inch lugs, a track I believe will set a new standard for flotation in this category, as the extra inch of width really helps to increase flotation and keep you on top of the snow and not down in it. At the end of the day, the new G4 Backcountry X with C-Motion is a very solid answer to a category that has been completely dominated by the Polaris Switchback Assault. The trail handling of the backcountry is good. It's not perfect, but it is good. And understandably so, a flatland freerider will show some drawback in one area or another due to the fact it's covering more bases. However, it does do a lot of things really well and does deliver exceptional engine performance, reliability, and efficiency, along with room to move around on the running boards, as well as an incredible clear out. Keep in mind as well, with the tipped rear rail profile, your ability to back this sled up in nearly any condition, and that's hugely improved allowing you to maneuver in ways straight rail sleds just won't do. Competition in this category is fierce and on point, and I'm not here to give you anything except the truth as I see it. This sled is great off trail. It's good on trail, 
but it is yet to be determined if it's as good as its competition. If you enjoyed the video that you just watched, like it and then subscribe to our page for more great content from Snowtracks TV.